No, lost it. What's <laughs> 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 oh. the heck? Welcome to the podcast. Number one, crude mistakes. With num- number one projects, Glenn, behind the mistakes. Havard, I probably haven't said that right, sorry, and KJ from Crude for Efficient, and special guest me, Chloe from DIY. Welcome, Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. First podcast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Tim had been on the more when he came on. He's, uh, I don't think there's any he's not been on. I think he's even oh, been really? on a few true murder ones. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the subject of, of some of them. <laughs> so thanks for coming on anyway, because um, I feel like after Tim's episode, the next guest needed to be here to cleanse us, because we all just felt just a bit wrong after that one, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> so the big question is then, Chloe, who are you? Who am I? I'm those... Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next uh, question. That was easy. <laughs> What's your surname? Carry on. Um, I DIY things and share them on Instagram. So I actually set my page in 2021 with my friend Claire. So it was DIYs by Chloe and Claire. But Claire moved away and didn't have time for that anymore. So now it's just me doing silly stuff and making stuff. Like the rest of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other than the, we didn't have friends to to start us off with. <laughs> well, you make a podcast. Yeah. yeah. You, um, you have to drag drag some friends uh, together or make exactly. friends. So did you you started out with Claire on YouTube as well? Did you? Yeah, we kind of watched a lot of DIY YouTubers, and we're like, oh yeah, we could do that, and then making youtube videos is really hard so we moved to instagram <laughs> you're just all for the, all about the short content nowadays or do you think you'll ever do yeah. a long form video again i have recorded enough clips to do a long form video but that was in november and i still haven't had the motivation to edit it <laughs> <laughs> well that happens yeah. at the moment i'm editing the, the stuff i recorded just uh, after christmas so Oh, okay. I can't work like that. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither, but it's tantalizing to try the KJ way, just having four or five projects in parallel during an entire year, and then just like uh, <laughs> at the end of the year, like, all right, try to cut it together to something. <laughs> I mean, it's not really by choice, more than it's not enough hours in the day, and it's easier to have multiple stuff going at the same time because then you can always do something on some of them. Because, I mean, it's no one's happy if you start a table saw in the middle of the night and that sort of thing. So. That's true. I um, I don't I say I don't have the memory. My devices don't have the memory to record multiple projects in one go, I found out. <laughs> I was editing the, a video on Saturday and um, you know, there's steam and smoke coming out of my computer by the end of it the film was lagging, it was really tricky to do, I just no, couldn't couldn't do multiple projects <laughs> mentally or device wise <laughs> It's that also, you have to be able to do it <laughs> mentally <laughs> <laughs> That's why uh, the invention of lists to-do lists that is Yeah, I, I'm I was going to say, I have like KJ, I have like five on the go at once at least. (laughs) What's your current project that you're working on at the moment? I am making a DM screen for my husband because he's our DM for Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing lots of pyrography art on the, well, it's just a plywood one, just as like a practice, but that's one of them. I actually finished a few at the weekend, so I maybe only have one at the moment. (laughs) Are you playing with him as well? Yeah. So this is kissing up to the DM. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or are you installing some hidden cameras or something like that? That's a good idea. That's a good idea. 
So not no, he's been after one for ages. So not following Dungeons and Dragons. I just thought about it for a minute. Is that Dungeon Master? Yes, sorry, yeah, yeah Dungeon so... Master screen. So it's like to hide all of what he's planning, basically. Sounds like a whole different sort of home activity to me. This does. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now that you say it, I think they're trying to make make us call it game master nowadays, GM instead of DM. But I'm I'm too old school for that. <laughs> I think. But then again, games and dragons doesn't have the same ring to it. <laughs> and, it's, and then dragons. And it's Robins, so it's games and Robins, and then it's a tweet board, and uh, I mean, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Dungeons and Dragons are. Maybe a rough, like, uh, notion of what uh, the principles are, but that's it. And uh, I've kind of realized that if I just dip my toe in, I'm stuck in a in a rabbit hole, so uh, I don't think I have time to uh, to try it. Yeah, I think you would you would enjoy it a lot and probably get way too deep into it really fast. <laughs> yeah, I had a I had a friend who was into uh, online gaming, and we were just chatting and being bored. Uh, and then he said, "Well, there is a chat function in World of Warcraft, so why don't you just make a free account and just try it out and." I was stuck in that for years <laughs> before I got out of it. So <laughs> I'm I'm easily uh, well anything addicted. There seems to be a lot of paraphernalia to go with the uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Not to say not like I've, I've ever played it, but you have special dice. Mm-hmm. Some people have castles where you put the dice in the top and they come out, it throws them for you. Then is that correct? Yeah, my friend has one of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what else do you need? Do you need a dungeon or? optional it helps <laughs> yeah yeah you you can so a lot of people play with maps like just like a grid on the table with the the minis but some people like make full 3d maps wow yeah. we don't do that <laughs> not yet <laughs> i mean it's supposed to be kind of te- theater of the mind uh but i mean it's it's really cool if you have nice looking models and minis and that sort of thing but I mean, it's the uh, improvised theater part with some dice rolling that I like. So mm-hmm. you don't really need it, but it's nice. I just wish I had someone to play with uh, in real life. But all the ones <laughs> I have, all the ones I have to play with are—I mean, most of them are in England, so I have to do it online. <laughs> What's your dirty mind going this time? Nothing. <laughs> yeah, right. I didn't know whether to laugh because they thought it was rude or break out a violin because I felt sorry for you. <laughs> I've got no real friends. <laughs> no one will play with me. <laughs> I'm so tall. <laughs> <laughs> what does that to do with anything? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> seems like it is like a fascinating universe that you can kind of develop into your niche if you can say that i see a lot of dms putting a lot of uh, effort into creating these universes for their players um a friend of mine when we worked together we actually we cooed the Christmas party a couple of years in a row, uh, making all kinds of funny stuff, videos, uh, cartoons, and so on. Uh, and then, of course, people started expecting it. So we we had planned like a grand finale, uh, but both of us quit before we got that far. But we thought we'd we'd actually make a board game from scratch and then present that as the Christmas party entertainment, where we just we grouped the people. Uh, around four tables and they all got a custom made uh, like a board game uh, with the rules up on uh, like the projector and then me and her would be the game masters just leading everybody and it would be a very internal 
kind of game, uh, which would probably only then have been funny to the people working there. But we realized <laughs> fairly quickly that uh, making a good game or basically making a board game, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> I mean, some of them seem simple, but uh, I mean, having a logic behind it that works and also then having a kind of a narrative story on top of that again i mean we realized we could never pull that off in the few weeks we had until christmas and then <laughs> the really tough thing with the uh, with games is that you have to play test them really a lot because you think you have this great setup for a game and then someone tries it and does something completely different from you because Everyone, t- everyone's play style is different. Some is really aggressive. Some is just playing nicely. Some are, some people are just trying to break the game or win in any way possible. So, and play testing is hard and tedious, and that's not the fun part of creating a game. So, no, that's true. I like so that's Scrabble. nice. <laughs> Scrabble is a solid game. <laughs> we've got to we've got friends we've played played scrabble on you know drunken evening and we've got one friend that just sucks all the fun out of it <laughs> <laughs> just for those high score scoring words you'll add an x in somewhere so no one else can go and oh it sucks all the fun out of it so maybe i don't like scrabble carry on <laughs> <laughs> But as a nice segue then, because uh, we were touching upon the subject being time-consuming and having time. Um, so, Chloe, what do you do in the daytime? Or is it uh, full-time DIYing? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, I'm a electrical and data engineer, um, Monday to Friday. It doesn't. It's not as interesting as it sounds. It doesn't sound very interesting. <laughs> Well, I, I'm working in electrical engineering, so I think it sounds nice. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so what do you it, do? Is, uh, is it an office job you have? or? Yeah, it's an office job. Yeah. So it's, uh, once again, one of us uh, uh, office rats who feel a need to tinker with stuff in the real world when we get home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Because you get you go kind of crazy just sitting in meetings and playing around on a computer all day. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, do you figure out how to get data and electric into commercial buildings or cities? Or so I work for a distribution network operator, so big voltages and stuff, and looking at the data we have on all of our assets and it's not very good and trying to make it better and link up all the systems it's uh there's a lot to do so you have that problem as well <laughs> oh yeah it's, uh, it's a lot just uh yeah i think everyone has the same problem because it's all historic stuff that's like was handwritten once back yeah. in the day <laughs> I mean, in Sweden, we more or less built the entire electrical grid and that sort of thing in the 60s, 70s. And then in the 80s, everything was built. And okay, now we don't have to do anything more. And everyone just sat waiting for the pension. And then it started to die off. And then new people came in and no one knew anything, more or less, and tried to build on to that. And then someone realized, oh, we really should have this documented in some kind of way. Uh, So it's amazing that the lights are on. Yeah, it's, it's surprising sometimes, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit like the... Maybe it's the same guys who built the, the train system in Norway. Uh, I have one previous colleague who, who worked there and he said that they are actually spending a lot of time on online marketplaces, actually getting computer boards, motherboards and so on for computers and parts that is not commercially available anymore. <laughs> and uh, There is this one famous person i don't think anyone has seen him but the rumors has it that he's still alive he's the only one who knows all the systems by heart (laughs) and of course the day he passes away then nobody really knows how all these systems are talking together and then you have fragmented people knowing some of the systems and so yeah i drive a car 
<laughs> rather than just relying on a myth a myth of a man yeah. <laughs> yeah, you really would think that the big tech companies would start retirement homes just to keep all their assets in one place and nowhere to nowhere they're stored so just, can you just dose up Lars a bit we need some information about what he built <laughs> back in 72 <laughs> Well, that's not a dumb idea. I think the last company I worked in, they actually had a kindergarten. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> this it's, is just the an ex- it's just an extension of that. You also put old folks home in. So, yeah, that's brilliant. Genius. I mean, I had colleagues who were like 73 or 74, something like that, still working because they enjoyed the job so much. And they were really good assets in knowing how stuff was built in the before times. Not that good at keeping keeping up with modern modern things and planning out stuff and uh, actually turning in their work on time and that sort of thing. They were more <laughs> like just sitting around chatting and having coffee, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But... Are you still going to be doing it when you're 73? I hope not, but I mean, I'm keeping it open. Who knows if there's going to be a pension system at that point. I was just about to say, definitely in England, me and Chloe are still going to be working at that age. <laughs> yeah, retirement age just keeps going up, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm so glad I went down a physical path of work. <laughs> mm. Because your body is broken, so yeah. you can't keep working. <laughs> <laughs> I'm planning to break my body because... Yeah, that's a good plan, good plan. <laughs> I'll dig that hole for you in a minute, I just need a rest. <laughs> <laughs> but... I've always been fascinated by that, that people, of course, it it would be a nice thing if I loved my work to that point that I would be content working at the same place for 30 years, getting that semi-fancy gold watch uh, and then just die on the clock and uh, have it put on your headstone like uh, (laughs) your company title or something like that. I mean... I don't get it. Um, After five, six years, I start to get bored and want to do something else. Yeah. That's why I work as a consultant instead, so I can skip between projects. But I mean, it's not like you're incentivized, that's the word, uh, to stay in your job that long. Because, I mean, I saw some old timers who were really a great asset for the company, but I mean, they were paid less than the the people coming in starting fresh because they had basically didn't have any pay raise uh, over the years. So that's, it's really, really sad that they, they can't really take care of people. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, lots of the field guys like at my work love it so much that again, they work into their sixties and seventies. There's loads of people have done 40 years of service. It's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, that's it. 40 years is a long time. I've only got, I think, seven more years to do, do my job. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you're not that old, no, but uh, just, okay. your, your job, jump. yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, how's that working in the UK if you're self employed and retirement? Is it uh, like the government set standard age or is it uh, differentiated? based on occupation or i think i think you just get to a, a certain age and they they take you for a nice slow walk down to the bottom of the field and shoot you <laughs> i was gonna say behind the barn but yeah <laughs> that's a problem in norway as well that of course we have a workforce that i mean the retirement age is basically the same but people now live well into their 90s and of course the economy and that doesn't add up so yeah it's been more and more talk about uh, raising the retirement age and of course the banks are on me and my wife you should have a retirement uh, account set up and uh, do some savings and so on and as i said to them but i need the money now we have two kids we have an old house that needs constantly fixing up so of course i could save those money in an account but there's an overhanging risk that in 30 years uh, the government says well there is not enough uh, 
pension funds for everybody and you have saved up so and so money on your own so we are just deducting that from our cut so uh and then you're back at square one i mean you, you do need to spend the money now because you've just started buying tools again i mean you've only just got back into the rhythm of it haven't you <laughs> exactly i mean i'm buying tools to last me a lifetime and if i start too late then it's going to be a short run <laughs> <laughs> any new ones this week tools um is? no um but i got a box of parts from china some uh you're gonna make your own tools. It's, it's it's technically tools. It's a CNC bits and uh, a pipe expansion tool and an amplifier and uh, bits and bobs. So uh, I think a pipe yeah. expansion tool and a whatever else, as you said, counts as tools. We'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. No worries. Uh, and of course, I'm I'm I haven't bought anything this week that's related to. Um, to me getting a welder um to to clue chloe in here um of course i've always been talking about getting a welder and then i realized if i start getting some of the paraphernalia paraphernalia that's cheaper like the gloves and the welding helmet i found on sale then i have that and then it makes no sense not also going ahead purchasing that welder so i'm slowly working up to it <laughs> you told me to do it he did start out by buying a plasma cutter, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you know, if you've got one of those, you might as well as buy buy a welder at that point, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, and and to be true, uh, as I said, that our water heater broke. But to be honest, it's probably an easy fix. But I was I was already on mentally uh, imagining how to make it into a grill in the summertime. So of course, <laughs> we are changing it out. <laughs> I mean, it's a lot of free metal. <laughs> I mean, you need to practice to cut stuff. So even if it's like a millimeter thin after all that rust removed, it's, it's good practice. Yeah. yeah, I'm not even lying. I'm not throwing it away. I mean, of course, I'm going to take the insulation off and everything. But uh, yeah. But, uh, Is it a copper heating cylinder? I think so, yeah. given the age. Cool. So, of course, I could turn it into a still, I guess. It would be a bit <laughs> large. <laughs> a big still. <laughs> I mean, uh, I have been talking about uh, quitting my job and uh, doing something on my own. So, <laughs> but yeah, that being illegal in Norway. So, <laughs> I mean, it's good money, but uh, <laughs> it's a bit high risk. <laughs> How far out is international water from you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... Mm. <laughs> Need a boat. Preferably run on ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I bought a few bits today. Not any tools, unfortunately. I got uh, ordered up some fret wire and a tuner and something else instrument related, but I can't for the life of remember what that was now. Oh, some strings. They're quite important, mm. aren't they? Could be, depending yeah. on the instrument. Yeah. <laughs> Drum. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you on to a new instrument builder yeah i'm going to start just a just a simple cigar box uh, build and learn to play it i do not play guitar no no i don't i don't play any instruments I've got no natural rhythm whatsoever <laughs> just like making them <laughs> Fair. which is a uh, great fun because i don't know whether they work until my friend steve turns up to take them for a spin <laughs> I mean, they say you should niche down, but... It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> you play guitar, Chloe? One at the side um, of you there? Yeah, I, I can play, but I don't remember the last time I did play. I sort of hung them up on the wall and was like, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely play them. And they're just art, basically. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, they are good looking, but yeah. I think Havard's got a few hung up at the side of him as well, doing the same job. Yeah. All that being said, I, I played mine yesterday, uh, one of them, uh, but it was basically just to see if uh, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, 
No, I don't practice or play anything. I think the the last time I actually played something was just to have something to put in a YouTube video. So uh, roughly a year ago. Yeah, that would be useful. I've just had a um, a copyright issue on my uh, my latest video. Of course, they don't mind me. They don't mind playing the video. I can use the music in the video, but I, it can't be monetized. But that's not an issue because. No one's paying me for my videos anyway. <laughs> yeah. Was it that uh, the stuff that your friend played, or no, 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 no? I don't, I don't have any issues with the, that music. No, it was. Uh, I used a, a thing called Upbeat, and it said, you know, mm. copyright free music. Just copy and paste what you've used in your description. And there's no issues, and literally, I think the video had been up ten seconds, and I got a. Gmail from YouTube saying we're not monetizing this. Oh wow! Yeah, <laughs> but I, I've had the same issue with uh, one video where I got a, like a copyright notice from some record label, and I actually bought a license for that from Audio Jungle. So it feels a bit well. It's not motivating to say. It. No. In that doors, uh, to have to send them uh, like an explanation that I actually bought a license, and then you have to try to find uh, the documentations that you got sent uh, when you bought it a while back, and send it over, and waiting for them to review it, and then lifting the ban from uh, YouTube. So, uh... but the funniest part is for one video I made this like the sound effects myself and one of the sounds which is like a plopping sound I made with my mouth and that actually got uh, <laughs> copyright flagged <laughs> like <laughs> just had to write well I made that I can I can make a video of myself making that sound uh, but but of course they they lifted the ban but yeah. I actually can't believe KJ didn't get a copyright strike in the knife video he made because that sound effect was so realistic, just like the film, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was. But I, I think maybe, yeah, but may, maybe the one who made the sound effects didn't uh, know he used them publicly. Oh, that's true. <laughs> so maybe it's a, maybe it's a like, class act, <laughs> actual lawsuit there. I think... Uh, I think there were several people uh, adding soundtracks to that one, so maybe, sh- yeah. maybe they should team up and. <laughs> <laughs> if he ever gets money monetized and becomes a rich YouTuber, I'm definitely chasing that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> please do, please do. <laughs> Me and Havard uh, made the lightsaber noises for KJ's knife video. <laughs> oh, amazing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really really nice to have something to. Put on there, and you're just, you're just having me sitting there waving it around and looking at it and being pleased that it actually worked. <laughs> that's something for the audience as well. I think that's um, actually, you know, friends joining in. You know, we've obviously got these two, even though they're far away, we have quite a lot of contact. You must miss that with um, Claire because I bet things got pretty silly, didn't they? Doing doing videos with another person. Yeah, it, it was in like. 20, 21, 22, when like all these trends were coming out, and we just do like the silliest DIY version, and we we're just killing ourselves laughing in between takes. <laughs> Did you try silly yeah. sound effects or anything like that? <laughs> no, not sound effects, just really bad lip sync. And <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of those videos actually. <laughs> <laughs> not completely terrible, Chloe. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> what talking about far away? Um, just uh, checking out the the makers list on uh, Maker Central. So it seems like we're going all four of us. Oh, cool. I was going to say five, but then I realized I'm one of the four on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's how tired I am. <laughs> That's maths, kids. Stay in school. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how did you get yourself up on the uh, Maker Central list of makers that are going? Did they ask you? Me? Yeah. Are you guys not on it? No. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, um, I think I commented. <laughs> I commented on. I think it was Joe Brooks' build. Um, Paul, he he went last year, and um, yeah, I think I commented on his Mega Central, being like, "Oh, see you there." And then they messaged me saying, "Hey, can we put you on the website?" Oh, okay. I was like, "Sure." <laughs> yeah. yeah, I had I had some conversation with them last week, and they oh yeah, send us a picture and and and, and, some, and a bio, and I did, and nothing happened. Oh no! It's starting so I guess to. I have to bug, bug them some more. I guess it's starting to look yeah. a little crowded now. That makers list, anyway. So it's pretty oh, big. Speak for yourself. I'm at the same. Uh, I started. Uh, <laughs> I, I sent him an email because I'm old school, and then uh, I got the error message from the delivery service. Okay, I had to DM them, and then I was put on red for a week so all right so it's maybe not meant to be and then <laughs> suddenly it's like oh yeah brilliant and then uh, send a picture of bio and uh, socials but i'm still waiting but there might not be a very big organization on the i don't think so communication part so i think it's uh it might be a backlog <laughs> yeah. I've not asked or sent them anything. I'm just hoping you guys are going to do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be fun meeting old friends and you uh, in real life because it's I mean it's a really nice vibe there. Just being around your people. Are you there for the whole weekend, Chloe? I am. Yeah, last year I only went for the Saturday, but I'm staying over now. Nice. I guess, well, you two are staying over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just flying over for the day. <laughs> that would be silly pancakes, yeah. So, <laughs> so where, where are you staying? At the, is it the Premier Inn? Yeah. The right, cheap yeah, one, anyway. That's the yeah. cheap one where yeah. most of us are staying. So. Apparently it's full now. <laughs> is it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm staying there. We booked, um, when, when was Scarpa Festival? And when did you guys, when was that? It was in October last year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think it was October. Yeah, that's when um, Michelle booked us on to in the Premier Inn because she looked at my face when you two were in Scarpa Festival and having a lovely time and said, <laughs> make nice. us to make you feel better. You were she was like, fine, around. fine, <laughs> I'll let you go. <laughs> but no, I mean, she's it's, 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 she's it's in the evening time. That's... Sorry. Yeah. Go on, KJ. Go on. You go, you go. I was just about to say she's she's looking forward to it as much as I am. She really got a lot out of it last year. She had a go at making all the things, and um, I was just interested in saying hello to people I recognised. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, it's the evening time that is the it's a really fun time in a hotel bar, probably Hilton or perhaps the Moxie, depending on where there's space. Just hanging around, uh, so it's. It's a complete deal, and and trying to to get into the Vetrix uh, event on uh, Saturday evening as well. It's not that hard if you know know some people. <laughs> I mean, it it is uh, invite only, I think, but uh, so far it doesn't seem to be <laughs> anyone has had a problem getting in if you're a if you're in the maker community, so to say. Oh, that's cool. Are you going with your husband, Chloe? Is he going along too? No, just me. Yeah, he's not a maker. <laughs> not really, no. <laughs> Too busy being a dungeon master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went with Claire once, and then I went by myself last year. But yeah, be for first time staying over, so get to see the bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, be, I'm sure it will be great. Yeah, last year was my first time, but we, we just went for the day on the Sunday, so obviously didn't see you there and <laughs> no. <laughs> not, not experienced the bar yet. No, looking forward to it. It'd be nice. So what are you working on, KJ? Have you, have we, have you finished this table yet? No, I haven't finished. I've finished uh, the... The test mm, middle piece, I mean, it's the one of those tables where you can take out pieces and make it bigger and smaller. So I started with the one that we don't use, because then it, it doesn't matter if I if I screw it up. But everything worked as planned, uh, a little too well, uh, it felt like. Uh, but I, I, 
I guess I, I heard what you were saying last week uh, about how to finish it because I decided to go with a, a roll-on lacquer instead of a spray one, and that yeah. worked pretty pretty well. Uh, so now I just have to prepare everything so I'm ready to actually steal the kitchen table from the kitchen and work <laughs> on it and, and find some kind of solution for the family to be able to eat breakfast and dinner and that sort of thing while I work on it and have I mean, I can't have the kitchen table standing in the workshop for like two weeks. That wouldn't really work. So it's finding the correct time slot for everything. Just just buy a sheet of OSB and throw a cover over it. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think the, the thing is to get something that's stable enough for, for small kids to crawl around and not uh, being a risk of tipping it over. Uh, so, yeah. I'll figure something out. Yeah, how are you are with your videos? Uh, slow progress. Being new to DaVinci Resolve, it's oh, yeah, everything takes that. longer. <laughs> 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 because I mean, in the in the first first time using a, a software, it's like trying to type with boxing gloves. Because I mean, I know how what I want to do. I probably know how to do it, but it's really and then you do something wrong and 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 you realize that you have destroyed what you just created and then you have to redo it and yeah so so it's it's a slow progress but we're getting there i find that very very tricky i um i was obviously sticking with cap cut uh, cap cut sorry um while i was while i was editing on saturday and it was um i think the longest edit i've ever done i mean i was absolutely shattered at the end, I couldn't. Um, I couldn't even remember how to make a thumbnail. I had to get Michelle in to help me with that. <laughs> <laughs> My brain was fried. The computer was fried. <laughs> I really liked the editing trick in that video because uh, you were doing some planing, and then of course uh, <laughs> your planer broke, and then of course you uh, had to wait for some parts, and then after you fixed it, the video quality was superb. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Finding out later that it uh, coincided with uh, you ditching the camera. (laughs) Yeah, so goodbye to the budget camera at that point. It was so obvious as well, wasn't it? (laughs) It was like night night and day. Yeah, seriously. (laughs) I just thought you had one of those combination planar cameras. (laughs) (laughs) They share the same capacitor. Yeah. (laughs) I had a few... um, sound issues with the video again um which is you know not surprising for me but um because i've not done many talking videos before anyway but um the the sound seemed fine listening to it on the computer speakers or through the headphones it's also fine um when i'm watching it on the on my telephone but when um, we put it through the tv the sound quality is bloody awful you know the speaking parts are really quiet I don't know if that's something to do with the TV settings or... I mean, you guys watched it, so what did you think to the sound quality? Was it awful? I watched it on the phone and that wasn't a problem. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if you have one of those um, settings for uh, sports, cinema or, or sport or yeah. Yeah, something like that, where it filters out some part, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. That's the only thing I can think of. Who knows? What do you think, Claire, when you watched it? <laughs> I did actually watch it. Oh, earlier. did you? Yeah. Oh, thank you. But then I, had, I got distracted by work, so I didn't finish watching it. I got bored, I had a nap. <laughs> <laughs> did some spreadsheets. Yeah. <laughs> work suddenly got more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, you just need some motivation, don't you, like that for work sometimes? What can I do that's worse? <laughs> Burn my hands. <laughs> if ever you're really, really struggling, you should uh, try one of Havard's slow videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on a roll. I'm, uh, I'm seeing a niche. Uh, I mean, the, the editing is a dream. I think uh, on... I didn't even plan for my last video. I just went down to the workshop and, okay, I have a couple of hours and then I recorded myself and 
Well, now I need to go inside uh, so I can actually hear uh, if the kids wake up. So, okay, just sit down by the computer and then I realized I have two video clips. I just need to snip them at the start and the end and then just put them back to back. And, oh, this is 15 minutes. That's a that's a video, isn't it? <laughs> just, <laughs> I just uploaded it and it worked on the thumbnail as it was uploading and then snipped and then it was there. I couldn't think of a comment for your, for that last video, um, Havard, but I did watch it and I did laugh out loud at that point when you hold the amplifier up to the back of the Hellcorder and just laughed your head off for a second. <laughs> I don't know why it really tickled me. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's genuine uh, joy and when, when things are lying and you didn't plan for it. Uh, so yeah, I found the I needed an amplifier and I could buy one or I could spend a lot of time building one. And then, of course, that would take a year and end up being the <laughs> probably the world's biggest side project. So I found a, a cheap one on an online marketplace. So we just went after work and picked it up. It worked out great. So, uh, yeah, that's the plan for the weekend. Trying to hook everything up and actually see if I get a life spark in any of it or if i burn the house down i don't know <laughs> <laughs> there's always that risk speaking yeah. of, of burning the house down uh, chloe you've been doing a lot of pyrography or that, at least that's what <laughs> you've been showing uh, online it looks like yeah. burning stuff is the, everything you do at the moment is that the case or is is that just what you show um yeah, I'm doing quite a lot of burning at the moment. My garage is absolutely full at the moment, so it's something I can do like indoors. Ah, yeah, it's the space uh, space thing. Nice, like indoor activity. Slowly poisoning yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, you're supposed to have the window open, but it's kind of cold at the moment, so <laughs> you want, don't want to be shaking from the cold. So no, <laughs> that's true. No, I finished my dice tray for this collab I'm doing last week and I thought I'd sort of batch make them so I've got two more to do one for me and one maybe to sell so probably be doing those at the weekend nice how long does it take you to make one of those the pyrography yeah maybe like I think the dragon took three or four hours maybe more I did it in like several sessions so yeah yeah but they look uh really uh, what's the word it's a lot <laughs> a lot of things to do i mean so yeah. it, it should not something you batch out in a coffee break no definitely not do you draw them first or do you trace them or so i trace these ones because i didn't have time to draw it and then <laughs> burn it so yeah. yeah i traced it did you start out some... did you start out drawing before I mean, not on these projects, but have you, do, you, do you do plenty of that sort of thing anyway? Yeah, I do sometimes do freehand stuff, um, but for for time purposes, <laughs> yeah, it's going to take far too long. Yeah, I can appreciate that. So, what are you up to next after these trains? Um, I don't actually know. I have a list. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> so see, the trays are involved with Rustins as well, the, the finish. Yeah. Are you affiliated um, with them or? Not really. No. They approached me and a bunch of other makers to um, make something for them in exchange for some products they'd send us. And we were to then give that away as part of a giveaway for them. I'm not quite sure why I said yes. It seems like <laughs> a lot of effort on my part, but maybe I'll get some followers out of it and then that'd be nice. Did you get plenty of finish out of it? Um, yeah, I got uh, a tin of their new polyurethane, which is kind of what they're advertising at the moment. And I also asked for some brush uh, cleaner, <laughs> brush restorer, because <laughs> I... I looked through all the products and I was like, there's nothing I really need at the moment, but I've always got dirty paintbrushes. So, and then they sent some Danish oil as well. Um, oh, nice. So it was, it was an all right amount, but I'm sure 
what I've made is probably worth a lot more than what they've sent me in product. <laughs> oh, hey ho. Sorry, yeah. what else is on your list then? So, oh yeah, I've got. Um, so my husband likes cooking and wanted like a a wooden like chopping serving board so he can sort of cut up everything and keep it all on the same board. So I've got a huge slab of horse chestnut in the garage. Oh, nice. I basically just need to cut up into three boards, sand forever, and then finish. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that look cool. Are you going to put yeah. any biography on them or anything at the same time? Probably not. Maybe just sign the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> nice little message on the side for him. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> <laughs> to remember your favorite dishes and that sort of thing. Not not too much, too much salt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Washing instructions. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to wash your hands. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wash me as well, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, we could have a checklist on one side and <laughs> <laughs> recipe on the other. <laughs> Just have PTO on the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have been wondering when do I fall into that. I think it's one of the things you just have to do at some point if you're doing woodworking. I mean, it's inevitable to do a cutting board. Oh, I'm like, on. I've still been around. Like, I know I'm probably going to do it at some point, but it's it's going to be something ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> just have to find a a way in an angle on it. A musical cutting board. <laughs> oh. I was going to say a screaming cutting board <laughs> I yeah. was actually expecting um, one of the latest maker challenges to be a cutting board so I've put some, quite a lot of thought into it so I've got some pretty wicked ideas actually but uh, I'm not sharing them because one day it's going to be a challenge <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, well, we'll share it because obviously that's the kind of guy I am. I was going to build a lot of knives into it. <laughs> it kind of chops the food itself. <laughs> <laughs> it's the reverse. A lot of knives and then you have a wooden plank. I'm thinking, are you... Don't you don't you want your channel or uh, I mean you've been banned once for uh, <laughs> no more knife post, posting knife content and now you're gonna make this a suicide machine. It's uh, I don't think it's gonna help your case. <laughs> be fine. It's just Instagram. <laughs> I mean, uh, other woodworkers are doing saw stop videos, and <laughs> Glenn is trying to show how to most efficiently lose all your fingers. <laughs> Last week I said we've got 10 chances at it, so you know, you might as well, you know, times money, cut your chances down immediately. <laughs> All 10 digits gone. Move on to the next thing. <laughs> yeah, I always said I did I, actually. I, sorry. sorry, I always said I'd never make a, a chopping board on my channel, and then um, Michelle came in the workshop one day and we ended up making one, but she um, she edited the video for that one. and it's actually a lovely video, but nobody watched it, <laughs> as <Aww>. usual. <laughs> well, uh, it's like a tooth fairy. You should go to bed tonight, and maybe tomorrow, <laughs> when you wake up, there is a comment on your video. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. So we had a couple of weeks of just communicating with each other just through our YouTube video comments. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why use WhatsApp when you can just... Uh... <laughs> and boost interaction at the same time <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah that being said i don't think i mean youtube is crap but i don't think the the comment section notification part of instagram work very well either i'm no i get notification about somebody posting something on something i said and trying to find it uh, doesn't happen half the time what I think is funny about um, Instagram at the moment, we're in two accounts on Instagram, is the time differences. You get people's different different people's feeds in. So, if, you know, something for instance, I can see something straight away from DIY's Chloe 
on one account where it can be, you know, five hours later on number one crude mistakes account. It's weird. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, you know, it's obviously feeding through to everybody in, at different times, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's that's being, uh, of course, I, I send a lot of stuff back and forth with the wife and then I also have a friend I do the same thing and it's sometimes I send the same thing to both of them but uh, sometimes I diversify based on the interests basically and it's fun to see how aligned you can get also to two accounts because uh, sometimes I send something and like yeah I saw this earlier today so you kind of get a feeling of the the bubble being built around you. And that's the one thing I really dislike about Instagram today. You, you can't get an unfiltered feed because they are always trying to feed you what they think you would like to see. And I like to stumble over things I've never seen before, but that now rarely happens. And I did, was it yesterday I counted? I think it was like, Three posts, one ad, three posts, two ads. It was like a ridiculous high amount. So it's, um, I think it's, it feels like it's getting worse and worse, but maybe it's just me. No, I think there are more ads now than there used to be. Yeah. Still like adverts if anybody wants to sponsor us. Still like (laughs) (laughs) I get a kind of allerg- allergic reaction to those feature uh, posts as well. When you something that has like half a million or a million views already, and I feel like this is this is for the for the common crowd, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, even if I like it, I don't like it. So to say, I just try to skip <laughs> over it just to. Or more or less teach the algorithm a lesson or something like that. But it got me thinking because I saw a documentary uh, last night while uh, the youngest one was falling asleep. And a lot of companies now are using AI to generating, of course, ads and content. And they're, they're now setting up actually bots who automatically generates content and pushing it out there and of course the the main purpose with an ad is you want someone to buy something but if you now have bots generating content and they also see that uh, companies or persons or groups also have bots that automatically set up social media accounts and making content by either generating it or mashing up something just to hit the algorithm. So you now have a lot of fake accounts that is just generating themselves and content to gain the most view as possible. But because the way the algorithm works, they also pull in other bots (laughs) that also try to circle in that same. So you actually have now a lot of automated non-human interaction going on in social media, but there's no persons behind there buying anything. There is no, no one there with a wallet. Like I want to buy something. So when do we hit that point that you just have AI just spewing out things to match the algorithm and then regular people that actually have something to show for, or that actually have the buying power and, want to look for something but they're just drowning in this auto-generated stream of nonsense it's uh yeah and this is just like the last year so it's gonna be fun to see within a year or two how this is actually gonna take off for better or worse (laughs) it's a nice little mini rant havard (laughs) <laughs> yeah That's managed to get one uh, right in the end before we end the main episode <laughs> I'm just amazed I managed to hold it off so far <laughs> so how can we get the spirits up again uh, uh, oh uh, I bought a pressure washer 
Ooh. Yay. <laughs> Ooh. But then the temperature dropped to minus degrees for like the two, last two weeks, so I haven't had time to use it because it's not really feeling like going out pressure washing something when it's minus three degrees. Uh, oh, but... you should uh, you should do what we did. We had the uh, we redid the plumbing here a few years ago, and I just had the plumber. Can you also put in like hot water on the outside tap? And it did. So, of course, now I can run hot water through my pressure washer. Mm, nice. Being careful because they're not made for that. So you can't just turn up no, just the hot a, water. A, but you can have like a lukewarm water and it really helps. And, of course, in the wintertime, it's a, it's a nice warm handle to hold. And uh, so that's a, nice. <laughs> that's a win-win. <laughs> yeah, I saw that there's like, I think it's maximum 40 degrees or something like that on this one. So, so yeah. I haven't considered doing that, but that could be interesting. <laughs> what are you going to pressure wash first? Uh, the patio stones, because they are so overgrown with moss that it's ridiculous. And then I bought some used uh, stones to extend the patio as well. And they, they also need a, a good cleaning. So that was the, the main reason of actually getting one. Yeah. Because it, the, the, it came... Uh, with a house, uh, a pressure washer when we moved in, and I managed to kill that one uh, in like the first summer. Uh, now looking back on it, it was probably some kind of uh, what's it called uh, heat uh, overheating uh, thing, because I, I actually accidentally ran, ran it without water in it. That's not good for a pressure washer. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I, I started. Oh, let's let it build up some pressure. That's nice. Oh, I didn't turn on the water. And then I tried to use it to go poof. And nothing happened. And then oh I I'm I, I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it. How how hard can it be? I looked over, open it, hmm. I, I opened this this thing and then I just got the lap full of oil because I accidentally opened the, the pump thing that and that's not supposed to be opened. So then I never got it back together then, and then I just threw it away, feeling feeling sorry for myself. I had that classic thing of a neighbour borrowing mine a few years ago, and that came back, and I turned it on, and that just started spewing out smoke and making weird noises. So I don't know what the hell he'd done to it. Using it as a sandblaster? I have no idea. <laughs> Probably running it with no water in again. Yeah. yeah. Left it on overnight or something, I don't know. But uh, yeah, that was... I'd buy a new one. Yeah. So that's why you don't lend tools to neighbours. I prefer not to. I prefer the neighbours just not to ask. <laughs> that would be the <laughs> ideal situation. The big question is, do you have that foamer nozzle for the putting sure. soap in the stream? Sure uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the most fun. I, I can do that. Just for doing that, just uh, spraying uh, foamy water all over, <laughs> like a foam foam party. <laughs> yeah, that's to be honest. That the most use my pressure washer get is when I'm cleaning the chairs that the kids use. They have these uh, wooden chairs, and then I just in summertime I bring them outside and <laughs> just hose them down. <laughs> most efficient way of cleaning. Still talking about the chairs, right? Not the kids. Yeah, let's say that. <laughs> Sometimes you wish you could use the pressure washer on them, but I think it's all right as long as you maintain a safe distance and don't get too close to them. Yeah, yeah, that's true. We have two water rats. I mean, uh, if there is water around, they uh, <laughs> they will be wet. They are. They they will be wet <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm hoping I can uh, get the kids to enjoy pressure washing stuff and having them clean clean stuff instead but that might be hard to actually aim them at the correct thing and not have them blasting everything in the in the garden that sort of thing so yeah there is a safety issue there maybe but uh i mean if you keep it off social media then uh, nobody will know <laughs> <laughs> well, my daughter was allowed to play with the jet, the jet washer very early on but uh yeah like you say everything got sprayed yeah. All the neighbors, me. <laughs> and she didn't have a, a small sibling to, <laughs> to destroy with it either. No, she's got a gigantic sibling. I don't think anybody dare spray him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, summer will soon be here. We can all start uh, getting 
getting those jet washes out. Yeah. Cutting the lawns on a Sunday afternoon, jet washing your car in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Not likely. Or like, uh, <laughs> or like Glenn liked to call it. Uh, work. Day, day of work. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> While we're waiting for summer, we will. No, lost it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Distracted yourself thinking of summer. Yeah. Those two oh. nice days. <laughs> it's, it's hard not... having to have entire winter just planning out those two days and two days you never know when they're coming so you just have to line everything up and like you wake up in the morning one day and uh, summer is here and then you do everything and then the next day it's winter again <laughs> it's actually been really nice here just lately the last few days i got my uh, first mosquito bite on monday really? nice yeah got a really nice swollen hand at the moment so happy days <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so it was a mosquito bite. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I just heard on a on a podcast that two countries stand out when it comes to the Ig Nobel Prize, and that's Japan, Sweden, and, and the UK. Oh. And and the the person talking about it said that probably that's because both cultures have been very ex- very been very accepting to eccentric types. Yeah, <laughs> compared to other countries who who has uh, more or less shun away from someone that's a bit weird and doing weird stuff and and being eccentric. So uh, having two representatives of the United <laughs> Kingdom, how do you feel about that? I think there's a lot of weird people in the UK, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but how how do I mean? There's weird weird people everywhere. But do you feel that? Uh, they're allowed to be weird. I don't know. Some places, <laughs> yes. Some places, no. Is it a bit too close to home that you both will feel <laughs> weird as well? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I think she's got a point. I mean, I, I'm quite accepting of weird. You know, if I talk to you guys every week, but um... <laughs> point. <I think. laughs> But you know there is a, there is a time and a place for it, isn't there? I mean, if you you know if you're in a restaurant with the family, you you don't particularly want people being strangely weird at that point, do you? Yeah, there's a difference of weird and weird as well. Yeah, yes. yeah. There's there's lots of varying stages of weirdness, isn't there? Yeah. But I think just accepting yeah. other cultures and things like that, I'm fine with. And you know, just the way people are in their beliefs and what they do, it's all good. Yeah, if you if you go and go to London, there's so many cultures. Or you can, if you enter uh, fashion, you can walk around looking quite weird in London. No one bats an eyelid. But if you went to, I don't know, somewhere like Glasgow, they might think you're very very strange. No, I think Glasgow is pretty much on par. To be fair, uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> was that a bad example? <laughs> I think I think it's the I think it's pretty acceptable for any city. It's when you get into the smaller towns and villages, it's probably not quite as accepting, isn't it? That's true, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, but of course I have that old historical reference of Glasgow being like the grey, bit rough part of Britain, but I don't know why, but the, the latter years, I I see it maybe a bit like Berlin, which is also uh, like a vibrant cultural scene. I, I, I get that same vibe from Glasgow now, but don't know why. I was there in um, in the summertime. Um, we only spent a day in actual Glasgow itself, but it was, uh, it was it was a lovely place. There was a, a nice older part of the city as well, which was you know really nice restaurants and delis and things like that. It was a beautiful area to be in, you know. But like every city on the outskirts, it has its run down areas. What are your cities like on the outskirts? Are they the same? Are they a bit run down or just pretty much the same throughout? You've got a pretty good standard of living, haven't you, in Scandinavia? I, <laughs> um, I, th- I think you kind of get blind to what you see every day, because I, I have been to cities where you, um, if you go from the airport into the city center, sometimes the the train lines go through some rundown areas, and then 
sometimes I catch myself and like, ooh, this looks like it hasn't been done any <laughs> infrastructure <laughs> adjustments the last 40 years. But now sometimes, especially in the like the the autumn and winter time when everything is dark and bleak and wet here in Norway as well, I just realize uh, it looks like that here as well <laughs> so <laughs> but you're so used to it but if you run like in the outskirts of the, the city centers you always have the you have the shopping mall but then you have the like the semi-industrial areas where you have car dealerships and you have various industrial shops and so on and sprinkled in with some rundown houses because it's an industrial site so they don't spend money on building the fancy houses or restoring them because you're being run down by industry on all sides so i think it's basically a universal thing chloe you're in cambridgeshire aren't you are you actually in the city or on the in the suburbs i'm not in cambridge but yeah. not far away you think cambridge is a very prestigious nice little city yeah. but there are it has some rougher areas but is, that where, that. is that where you live? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're all right, and then you moved in. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're a bit further out than, uh, than uh, in Cambridge itself. Yeah, Cambridge is a lovely city. Yeah, it's really nice. it, Yeah. So it's. A, I thought, is it is it a city or is it just a part of the campus? I need to Google it. I mean, it's to me, te- uh, technically a city. It's yeah. a very small city. We don't have a large campus. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we have we have the, some of those as well. I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember the name. I can probably find that in Google Maps if I spend a few hours looking. But um, when I went to uh, university, um, they have like a friendship school in Sweden, uh, and then we were gonna have like a week workshop. Um, Together with a class from that university and they had it was not a part of the campus because it was like a separate site but it was owned by the university and I remember we had to drive for six hours towards Stockholm and then we took like a, a hard left and then it was like two hours just forest 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 and then you came to like an opening in the the foliage or something and it was like this uh, Swedish uh, mansion house with like the pond and uh, the fountain between it like a proper nice house but it was in the middle of nowhere and then they had some classrooms there <laughs> nice <That's weird>. <laughs> <laughs> really cheaply probably <laughs> yeah probably but it's, it's I mean the house was probably 100 200 years old or something so guessing it was some uh, wood uh, related with all the forests and so on but uh, I mean it <laughs> there should have been a reason for it to be placed there <laughs> sorry my camera just ran out of battery <laughs> <laughs> it happens <laughs> uh, what's kind of thinking did she f- no there is still audio there so that, <laughs> that is fine <laughs> Frank Frank if you scramping around <laughs> I was holding it together until the camera came back in, pointing at the ceiling, and then slowly zooming down. <laughs> oh, got yeah, again. It is. It's right. I'm going to go get another battery quickly. No worries. <laughs> All right. The question is um, do we have an outro for the main episode? I see the time is running. You could do an outro now. Oh, or you can make Chloe make one. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you've got nothing, re- nothing prepared for that. <laughs> We're some nice to our guests. Well, uh, Come on, do our work for us. <laughs> I, I had the intro uh, almost ready, and the pitch was I was going to introduce a special guest trying to um, botch her name just as much as... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Glenn botches mine, and then I should just uh, introduce her as Chloe, and then uh, like obviously skip the <laughs> the surname. <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, I actually do know how to say your name properly now, but I'm just never going to do it. It's been too long. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I'm, fa- I'm falling in line myself, so uh, having an identi- identity crisis. <laughs> All right, but we can call it a night. And then the last point on my list is the tiny workshop club. So uh, for anyone who wants to follow that thread, you have to wait for the half pint. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was an awkward silence. <laughs>